Now, can you tell us a little bit more about your incredible work and how it coincides with AI? One thing that we try to do in the Laboratory for Progress more than anything else is try to have robots that can be programmable by a, lot, a wide number of people. What we try to do is, is have robots that you can just demonstrate what you want the robot to do. Um, and it learns from that experience and then it, it's able to, to do that, but adapt it to new scenarios and, and learn from continual guidance. So what we do at Affectiva is we build AI solutions whose goal is to understand human emotion using a particular uh, artificial intelligence approach called machine learning. We are using it to understand how these voice modulations that I mentioned correlate to the emotion that you are feeling. Affectiva's goal is to humanize technology, uh, to give it the ability to take this very important channel of information, um, the facial expressions that we are making, um, and then you know the changes in our voice in order to make uh, more accurate predictions of how we actually feel, what we actually want to achieve. I work as a research fellow at the Vadhwani Institute for Artificial Intelligence. Uh, we are a non-profit uh, who work on using AI for social good. A, a big problem in India is malnutrition. Okay, and uh, for baby malnutrition in babies. So we have been working on developing uh, a smartphone-based uh, anthropometric tool where one person, someone can just take a video of the baby, and from that video, we'll reconstruct the we we'll construct reconstruct the full 3D model of the baby, and from that 3D model, we'll get all the anthropometric measurements. So just from the video you would be able to get the weight, the length, the arm circumference, the chest circumference and any kind of measurement you want to have. And once you have this model, it can be essentially deployed on the model locally and so you won't even need internet connection. Right? So the same as TikTok, uh, just because you watch a particular video uh, for slightly longer time, it might just indicate you're, that's interesting to you, right? And then we we'll try to analyze what that really means, right? Like what in the video attracts you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's hard. To be honest, that's hard because you got to be able to analyze what's on the video, right? Most videos don't have any text right. uh, telling you what it's about. You just have to be able to analyze the video. And that's AI, all right? That's AI. Like AI, uh, when we say AI in this particular sense, it is a specific uh, problem. Uh, analyzing the video, analyzing the image, trying to analyze, trying to understand some analog information, turn that into feature. Feature meaning, you know, your, your interest. We have done research on how can a machine be part of conversation with multiple people, which is more difficult because not only you need to understand when some, uh, like in a normal conversation, when it's the time for you, to, you to answer, which is in fact a very hard problem. But also, is is that question for me, or for other person? Is that is that a good time for me to intervene? And again, we do that with a little training, and we do very well. And uh, making a machine do that well, it's very hard. And we have done work on that. And, so that's an example. I'm really interested in embodied AI, so physical robots that move around in the world. And my personal interest is in how um, robots are perceived by people, because people will often treat robots a little bit like they're alive, even though they know that they're just machines. And the way that it intersects with law and policy, our perception of technology can really influence lawmaking. Um, maybe it shouldn't, but it does. So Optimus Ride is an autonomous vehicle company. We build autonomous vehicle systems. So not just thinking about the vehicles themselves, but also all of the software that goes around making a self-driving vehicle. But then, you know, as we start to build out these systems, we start to think about ways that our vehicle can become more intelligent. So. Um, is there a way for the vehicle to start learning the preferences of its riders and the communities that it's within? And that's where artificial intelligence starts to become really important. My first 
job was basically working on the assistant, which is the voice assistant for Google. So we use AI in a lot of different ways for the assistant. AI that's used on the understanding side, which is how to take that text and understand what the user wants. There's um, AI that's used on the answering side, which is sort of like finding the answer in the wealth of information that is in our knowledge base and our model. And then there's AI in generating the response, turning the numerical response into um, an interesting sort of spoken language or, or natural language response. AWS is Amazon Web Services. Um, it's basically a cloud computing platform. So what we did is we provide, we use machine learning to, to look at these big databases of data and figure out the relationships to, to be able to tell, oh, these things match and these things don't match. Uh, and then we we train this machine learning model, and then then people who would come to AWS who wanted to merge databases or um, clean up their databases, remove duplicates, they could use our machine learning backed solution to help solve those problems. I am a professor at the University of Florida in the Computer and Information Science uh, and Engineering Department. What I do is more focused on computer science education, so it's looking at. How do we identify the problems that people have in learning computer science and how do we help them learn it better, right? How do we help them overcome those barriers so that they can learn it better? And so I think there's a place for everybody within AI.